Hello everyone, and this is the beginning of episode 5. Again, continuing off where we left off on episode 4. We're going to continue to make the face. I know long process on their face. And we're just going to keep continuing moving our points. I'm actually going to start just right here and redoing this part right here. And just make it a little more round for the cheek. And then we're going to go back up to the forehead where I was uh, actually finishing up. Um, moving all my points over this middle line has to all move up so eventually I need all this middle line to be kind of like up here and follow this kind of trend right now it's kind of all out of whack and I was moving all the points to the left just so everything can follow the a more of a general trend um, rather than kind of go all left and all right everything kind of want has to stay straight in regards to the top of the face to the bottom of the face not necessarily the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen or the top of the image to the bottom of the image but we have to understand where um, the actual um, geometry of the faces. So it's actually going off the screen. So I'm gonna try and make everything kind of bow to the left, but in a orderly way. So I'm just gonna move most of this stuff kind of just up. Kind of to about right here and then I can start shaping it to make sure the lines are not crooked. So this is why moving all the points to the left comes in handy. So now we could fit all these points kind of in the direction of where they're supposed to go in relation to the top of the face. Um, and that wasn't really possible before with the layout of points that we had. So now it's really starting to make some sense. I'm actually gonna add one point, one point right here. I feel like I need something right there. And then I believe for the most part, I think I'm actually gonna follow, I don't really like, no, I kinda like how that is. I'm gonna add one more point up here. And then I'm actually gonna fix this now cause I don't like how that went all the way over there. So now I wanna move um, this one to the left. A lot of this mesh at first is really just looking back, you know, take a step back from the drawing, look at it from afar, constantly check the lines and your work from a distance because things things change all the time. I make corrections to my work throughout the whole time. Like all these points, I'm always moving, I'm always reshaping it, I'm always making sure it's as smooth as possible. Uh, this is a long process, so you might as well take your time and fix everything as you go along. I'm actually going to shift this, these pieces over so I can create more of a, a frame around this highlight and I can go a little bit more vertical with this part. Now I'm going to shift this because this is a little out of whack. I'm going to take all these points at once. So I'm holding down shift while I'm clicking these points. It's kind of hard to see these points in the blue. So maybe I'll go to like a light gray. I'm actually going to change off this light gray now that I'm back up here. Maybe I got to pick a better color. No. Uh, yeah, I guess that works. Looking a lot better than what it had before. 
That's for sure. So if we hide this background layer, look at what we have now, as opposed to our starting position. Let's go to our start. Let's look at, that's what we started out with. Then we advanced to that. And then we wound up with this. Kind of went far. And you could really see the structure of the face. You could see the up and down. You could see where it gets tight around the jaw. The, around the jaw. You could see the spherical parts of the face, like the cheeks and the chin. That's what we want. So pretty much we got to close it out by finishing up this right side. It's a little uh, untouched. So once we finish up that right side, we could probably look at the filling in color and then working at smoothening out and correcting uh, the color after the fact. Um, so let's start out with the part that we know that is already done and defined and then the top left. So why don't we start by looking at the, this is the first line. So already I could see that this eyebrow line just needs to go down a little bit like that. And then this needs to come actually to the center point because the center point goes off the screen and that's going to be my corner, which is also my center of the eyebrow. As you can see, this goes through the center of the eyebrow and follows that trend. So now this is my boundary line of the eyebrow. This one we can bring up into the boundary of the eyebrow like so close off that shape. We're going to do the eyebrow separate, but we want to have the boundary for the uh, eyebrow. So now what we need is to understand where our next line goes because we haven't edited that yet. So our next line starts right here. This line right here isn't really incorrect, but what we do need to fix is the line under it and the line under it needs to follow the trend of the light pink that's above this orange. I mean under this orange. So I would see this line right here as the top of the pink. And what the problem is that this goes all the way to the edge and the pink doesn't go to that way. The pink actually falls down to about right here. So now we got to start bringing these points downward to make up for this space that we need to fix. As you can see, now we're framing, we're going to start to frame the blending of the color on the round the eye. So I would say this needs to just move up towards the center a little bit. So there's less compression there. Just like that. And now we can take, let's see that line can stay. I just don't like how these are not bending now. This one needs to come down and go up like just like the eye socket shadow right there. Although we're going to do that shadow separate as well. Um, I'm going to follow that trend of it just like that. And then these act, these do need to change just like so, cause this needs to come down in order to meet the requirements of what I was just talking about. So now you can see how that, how that moving those points down allowed me to do that in a nice smooth way. So now this one I can actually bend down as well a little bit. This one is a little too extreme. Just like so. All right, so let's move to the next line. So for the next line, I'm gonna actually put this in the center I'm going to put this in the center right here of the upper eye socket. So this part, this little triangle shaped half moon, and I'm going to put that right in the middle to define that color. And then I'm going to use this line as my upper eye line as the actual eye barrier. So pay attention here. Just fixing that up. This is going to follow the eye barrier. Like that. This one right here has to have an arch here. This is coming down. This is coming down. Now this needs to end about, is this the right point? Yes, this is the point. This needs to go about right there.
You can see we're constructing the shape of the eye now. Alright, so what I'm going to do with this one is actually I'm going to take this off the center of the eye. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to start using that as my frame to the eyeball on the bottom. And it's going to be the inner frame. We have two frames here. Alright, so you can see what I have now as opposed to before. Now you can actually see the eye, you can see the trends of the shadow, and we're going to keep going um, until we're really done surrounding this eye so we can blend the color around the eye properly. So pretty much we just need one more point here. This is going to be pretty tight over here because this is going to be our external barrier by the eye, and I'll show you what I mean by that in two seconds. So you can see how the, this inner line like follows this path, and then we have this outer black right there where the outside of the eye line, um, the eyelashes are. And we're gonna actually use that as another boundary. Just like so. And that's gonna come right there. I'm gonna make this pop out a little bit like that, rounded, move this up. And now we have even a more fine detail right there. Perfect. All right, so now I'm just gonna add one more point under it to follow this trend. And I'm actually gonna bring these points down and we're gonna barrier, create a barrier around this dark orange shadow right under the eye. And we're just going to add a point right in the middle so we can define that color that we just created for ourselves. So what we have for now is that. So it's getting a little bit more specific right there. I think that is fine the way it is. So pretty much I think I'm done over here. Let me see. Let me just investigate the nose. One thing I'm going to do is um, enhance the edge of the lips right here, just like so. Then I'm going to bring these in. I'll bring this down. Fix it. Right, so now after we moved all of those little points I just added, we're going to just, I think, add one more set of points right here just so I can cut this off. Like so. And I'm not really worried about what's going on over here because I know based on my mesh that I've created that everything's really just going to be perfect. Um, and then the complexity of making sure we don't get too much splot splotchiness where it gets tight like this is going to come with the color blending. And that's going to take some time in, a, in itself. Um, but we're basically done, except for I just want to wrap the chin a little bit nicer. I think it could be a little bit, it could be touched up. By that I mean like this kind of curvature is not really following the trend right here. It's kind of just going straight down the chin. I want it to go around the chin. Plus, I want to make sure this highlight doesn't get lost. I want to make sure we cut this highlight. I'm actually going to bring this one. These, got, these points kind of move in closer to the chin like it is so, so I can do this highlight line properly.
Plus, everything's going to come straight to his center. This is looking correct. Everything's going to come right to the point of the bottom of the chin. And we should be seeing this complexity at the bottom of the chin. Um, if you want to check yourself, if you've kind of done it right, you would want to see all this compression down here. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add one more point right in the middle here. And I think for the most part that we can start coloring in our face. This is what it's gonna look like right now before the color. And since we're about to color, I might as well just call the episode right here. And I really appreciate you continuing forward to episode five. I hope to see you on episode six where we fill in the color of the base layer of the face and you can see what that first step looks like i know it doesn't feel like a first step because we've been doing this you know for a little bit but that's just the the nature of gradient mesh and i will see you later in the next episode thank you for watching